Ahoy there everyone! Welcome to your Oracle SQL tutorial series. This video we are going to start designing a ser- uh, oh God. What's the goal of this video again? In this video we are going to be designing a miniature database with the primary goal of applying what we know about foreign keys and how to design them. So we're going to start with, this is a simple thing, three tables and we'll make some connections with some foreign keys and we'll go from there. So what is the goal of our application? This database is going to power an application where people can create an account, sign in, and then they can make projects. So this is like a project management software. Imagine like Jira, if you know what that is. Essentially, you create an account, you make projects, and then you add people to those projects. So that's all it's gonna do for now. So we're gonna put the projects on this side. And we'll put the users over here. Can you guess what goes here? Yeah, it's gonna be an intermediary table between projects and users. We'll get to that in a minute. First, let's talk about the projects table. This is just gonna have information about the project, including a project ID, a reference to the user that created it, all that good stuff. And the way I'm gonna be designing this is following the ERD pattern, which stands for Entity Relationship Diagram. Essentially, what that fancy word means is we're gonna make tables as boxes and we're gonna list the columns down this way. And we basically just ignore rows. We're not gonna care about what data is put in because as long as we put the column and what's allowed, that's all that matters. So in the user table, we'll have a user ID, a username, first name, and last name. I'm not gonna worry about data types for now. All you need to know is that if you have a foreign key, it needs to match the data type of the column it references. Now over here on projects, we'll have a project ID. We'll have a creator, which is a reference to the user. Now, this brings up the question, do we reference the ID or do we reference the username, I think? Yeah, do we reference the ID or the username? and it's ultimately up to you. I think it's kind of important to get experience with both referencing primary keys and referencing things that just have the unique constraint. So for now, I'm going to use the username and I think that's gonna improve our readability. But as we go on, I think what we choose will change. I'm just trying to get us all familiar with everything here. So creator is going to reference username. We'll also have a project title. And if I wanted to get real fancy, you could put in like a creation date and all kinds of junk like that. But that's really good for now. Now, what about this table? Well, the only other table we need is a table that lists what users are part of what projects. And that is a many-to-many -many relationship. That's because we designed it that way. A lot of this stuff you get to choose. For example, in this situation, a project can only have one creator. That's because it's a column inside of the table. If we wanted to where a project can have multiple creators, we would need to take that out into a separate call, a separate table and name it like project creators, for example. But when it comes to the users that can join a project, I'm making that a many-to-many -many relationship. So what that means is one user can join multiple projects and an individual project can have multiple users. The way we design that in database design is using two one-to-many relationships. That calls for an intermediary table. Now the intermediary table name by convention is just a combination of this table and this table. So you can pick one to be singular and the other one's gonna be plural. So we could have project users or we could have user projects. I think it makes more sense to have project users. So that's what I'm gonna go with. And this is gonna have two columns, a project ID and a user ID. And these are both gonna be foreign keys. Now you see in this situation, I decided not to use the username, but I could have if I wanted to. In fact, I could have used the project title here instead of the project ID. But then that gives you the limitation of that they have to be unique. Now let's figure out which tables are the parents and which ones are the children. The users table is going to be the parent. That's because it has no foreign keys. You see all the arrows point to the users table. Now the projects, that's the child of the users because you see it references the username. 
Now the project users table, that's a child of both of these tables. So I guess if you had to draw it out, you'd have this being the users table, this being the projects table. That's a child of the users, so. And then we'd have project users down here, which is a child of both of them. The next thing we want to do is ask the important questions about the foreign keys. Let's look at all the foreign keys we have here. We have one, two, three. So we need to ask at least two questions for each one of these. So let's start with the users table and kind of move down the family tree. So we'll go to its child and we'll start the projects. And we'll look at this foreign key, creator. Should it be unique? The best way to think about this is to ask, what would it be like if it was unique and what would it be like if it was not unique? If it's unique, that means within our table, we have a column and it's a creator. We can only reference a specific creator one time. So if it's seven, that means that's the only time that creator can be in the projects table. Personally, I don't think that's a great idea because essentially what that is saying is that a person can only create one project. That's up to your business decisions on whether that's a true statement or not. But in this situation, I'm gonna make it to where a user can create multiple projects. So it's not going to be unique. Now, is it going to be not null? Well, if it is null, that means a project can exist without a creator. And I don't think that makes a whole lot of sense. So I'm gonna say not null. And we can look at these IDs, and if you want, you can go through the whole process. But I've come to the conclusion that this is gonna be the same for all of the foreign keys here. Because we're not gonna to wanna to make it to where a person can only join one project or a project can only have one user. This stuff doesn't make sense. And it also doesn't make sense to have a project with no user inside of the project users table. So obviously you want it to be not null. Hopefully that wasn't a little too quick for you guys, but hopefully you guys get the point. And just, it's really important to really think through this stuff. like a lot of effort can be saved now by working harder on the design and the engineering of the entire solution rather than rushing through it and just pooping on a database and trying to get out good data. Structure it and then your data is going to work out. <laughs> I know it's a lot of extra steps, but it's worth it. So thanks guys. <laughs> really appreciate everything you guys do. Thanks for watching these videos, liking them, and ultimately I really appreciate you subscribing.